It was a rainy day in Owari province. Lord Oda Nobunaga was considering his options. He was about to face his biggest challenge since his rise to the head of the Oda family. One of the strongest daimyos of Japan, Lord Imagua of Suriga province, had gathered a sizable army and sought to expand his influence to the west at Nobunaga's expense. The inevitable clash between two ambitious lords that changed the course of Japanese history is about to begin. It is the year 1545. The reign of the old shogunate is over. The puppet ruler installed in Kyoto wields virtually no authority and serves as a mere tool in a political game between the rising regional powers, which, led by powerful lords called daimyos, struggle to carve for themselves the biggest piece of a disarrayed Japan. In this episode, we take a closer look at the Takedo region, where many of the most renowned daimyos rose to power and fought each other for domination. Meet Yoshimoto, head of the prominent Imagawa clan of Suriga province, who over the last 10 years not only walked a treacherous path to the undisputed position of Imagawa daimyo, but more importantly proved to be an able administrator and skilled politician, considerably strengthening the influence of his clan in the region. Since his early years as head of Imagawa, Yoshimoto spent most of his time playing a careful balancing game between his western and eastern neighbors. A challenging task, as Imagawa's western frontier at Mikawa was the site of constant warfare against the fierce warrior Oda Nobuhide, while to the east, he had to tread lightly parlaying with the powerful Takeda and Hojo clans. It would be an outright exaggeration to say that he flawlessly achieved all his political and military goals. He had to face some setbacks with blows dealt by Oda. What is more, he angered Hojo by marrying into the Takeda clan. But considering Yoshimoto's initial position, his struggle could only be described as successful. By the year 1550, he subdued the Matsudaira clan of Mikawa, essentially incorporating the province into his domain and also worked to improve his situation to the east. He became a close ally of Takeda Shingen by marrying his sister in 1537, and a couple years later, took an active part in Shingen's coup and deposition of his father. Moreover, Yoshimoto smoothed his relationship with the Hojo, eventually forming a three-sided alliance between the two and Takeda which essentially secured Imagawa's eastern border and allowed Yoshimoto to focus more on his turbulent western frontier and the internal affairs of Totomi and Suriga. He also had some luck, as in 1551, his aggressive western opponent Oda Nobuhide unexpectedly died, and since much of his power relied more on his strength of personality and not rigid feudal dependencies, the Oda clan quickly plunged into disarray and for a time stopped being a threat to Yoshimoto's holdings in Makawa. With no direct threat on the horizon, Lord Imagawa spent most of his subsequent years carrying out a series of land surveys and conducting reforms to consolidate his power by declaring Imagawa the ruling authority of the realm. Thus, Imagawa was among the first who formally declared independence from the shogun's authority. It's also worth mentioning that Yoshimoto's political schemes aimed to turn border Oda retainers to his side, as he hoped to achieve a favorable position by isolating the strategically important Chita Peninsula. However, Lord Imagawa probably didn't expect that in a few short years, the province of Owari would see the rise of another ambitious warlord. Oda Nobunaga, son and legitimate heir of the late Oda Lord, was of dubious reputation, following a rather brash and brazen lifestyle. He was even responsible for a scandal at his father's funeral, where he presented himself wearing informal clothing, threw incense powder at the altar and stormed out of the temple. It was a clear sign for the enraged Oda family that the hot-blooded Fool of Owari, as Nobunaga was nicknamed, just wasn't the right man to be a dutiful heir to his father and thus turned their favor to Nobunaga's prudent younger brother, Nobuyuki. 
As you might imagine, Nobunaga's first steps didn't gain him any recognition. But he entered the fray of the heavily divided Owari province, and in the course of seven bloody years, subdued or killed his internal enemies, and achieved a mostly undisputed rule in Oda's home province. It was an extraordinary display of Nobunaga's effectiveness and ruthlessness. But despite his predominantly successful streak in Owari, one could hardly envy his position in western Tokaido. Nobunaga was surrounded by enemies vying for control of Owari, the Saito clan of Mino province to the north, and of course, the ever-dangerous Imagawa to the east. Close to the end of the 1550s, Oda fought for control of the Owari makawa borderland with Imagawa retainers, among them a young but shrewd successor of the Matsudaira clan, Motoyasu. Both sides had their victories and setbacks, but the campaign eventually came down to a struggle for control of two Imagawa castles in Oda territory, Odaka and Narumi. As Nobunaga was unable to force these strongholds to submit, in 1559 he built several forts in the surrounding areas with the intention of preventing Imagawa from providing supplies. Seeing that his forces at Makawa faced a worthy opponent, Yoshimoto called his banners, gathering more than 15,000 men, and prepared the relief of his castles, possibly followed by the subjugation of Nobunaga. The popular belief is that he was about to march to Kyoto in an attempt to exert direct influence on the Shogun. But this meant crossing through the populous and fertile regions of Owari, Mino and Issa provinces, which would surely not surrender at first sight of Lord Imagawa who, despite controlling three provinces, had limited economic potential. Anyway, in June 1560, Yoshimoto assembled an army and headed to Owari. With the help of his overlord's units, Motoyasu stormed two of Oda's forts, while the main army entered the hilly Okahazama area and set a camp there. When Oda retainers learned how big of an army was about to challenge them, they advised holing up in Kiyosu Castle, or even surrendering to Imagawa forces. But not Oda Nobunaga. He said that he would not yield to Imagawa, a long-standing enemy of his father. He gave a rousing speech and departed Kiyosu Castle with all who were willing to join him. He arrived in the vicinity of Narumi Castle with his hastily assembled army and mustered three nearby forts. At this point, it was clear to Nobunaga that the Imagawa forces were scattered and one of Yoshimoto's detachments was camping near Odaka Castle. The only hope for Nobunaga to win this encounter was to swiftly attack the separated groups of winded Imagawa forces, which were earlier used to relieve the besieged defenders at Odaka. And that was more or less what he attempted to do. Just after a heavy rain, which helped to conceal his movements, and exploiting Yoshimoto's sub-power scouting caused by his overconfidence, Nobunaga ambushed the invaders' vanguard camping near Tokaido Road, a few kilometers from the main camp. Theoretically, the Narumi Castle garrison could have attacked Nobunaga from behind, but Lord Oda stationed a few hundred men in two forts between them, essentially stripping the Narumi commander of any tactical possibilities. Following this initial victory, Nobunaga proceeded southeast, pursuing the remnants of the vanquished vanguard, and prepared to storm the Imagawa camp, located slightly uphill. He probably didn't even know he was attacking Yoshimoto's detachment, who had barely any time to prepare for this surprise encounter. Contrary to popular belief, Yoshimoto had only around 5,000 men at his disposal because the rest of his troops were dispersed in the area, busy fighting Oda garrisons defending the forts, as mentioned earlier. Still, he had the best of Imagawa's men forming the daimyo's guard with him, supported by more numerous regular units. Upon seeing their own kinsmen running towards them in a panic, with the Oda army following them, some of Yoshimoto's troops on the hill lost heart and retreated without a fight, thus reducing the initial disparity between their enemies. Oda soldiers rushed uphill to attack the surprised enemy, 
Violent melee began as Imagawa's men strived to keep their line and maintain their position on the hill. It was truly a challenge as most of Nobunaga's men had solid battle experience gained through the years of local fighting in Owari, and only Yoshimoto's guard were a match for them. And despite losses, they stood their ground firmly, at least in the beginning. But Nobunaga's Hatomoto, supported by other units, eventually prevailed and forced Yoshimoto to give ground. There was no chance that any other Imagawa units could aid their daimyo in time. So considering the unfavorable course of the battle, Yoshimoto decided to retreat northeast and together with his shattered retinue, made an attempt to reach his closest castle in the borderlands. By this time, Oda Nobunaga probably realized that he was attacking the camp of the Imagawa daimyo and sent his best men forward to prevent Yoshimoto from escaping the battlefield. Running through the valley, Lord Imagawa was bogged down in muddy terrain and was forced to fight his last stand against Oda's pursuit. Despite the abundance of Imagawa troops in the area, none came to the aid of their overlord. And although Yoshimoto fought bravely, together with his retinue, he was eventually slaughtered. Soon, rumors spread that Lord Imagawa was dead and his forces retreated back to Mikawa. Even considering Nobunaga's brilliant political and military skills, this was an unexpected victory. Not only had his biggest enemy lost his life, but also many of Yoshimoto's prominent vassals and officials yielded at Okahazuma, which eventually led to the collapse of the Imagawa clan several years later. The victorious clash at the border gained Nobunaga nationwide fame. As Lord Imagawa was widely recognized as one of the most powerful daimyos in Japan. Yet that far-reaching success was just the first step of Nobunaga's extraordinary career, which eventually had a critical impact on Japanese history.